The purpose of this article is to go over the final paper instructions. Now, the way that the semester is broken down is um, this is your final paper, but you take one section at a time and we go through it week by week. So you submit a section one week and then I revise, I give you feedback on it and then you submit that again, you know, in two weeks with a, a new section attached. And so I'm just going to go over the whole paper in this video. Um, so this is the final paper format details. Um, and so as you see here, you're going to see the headers. So these are going to be the headers for your study. Now, please do not put these check marks or the bullet points. You are expected to follow APA headers um, in that sense. So, you know, so purpose will be an APA header level one. And if you need to know what that is, go to the Purdue OWL website and they will explain to you how to do a level one header. And so all of these three here are level one and then these are level two and then, um, you know, we go back there. Okay, so the first thing that you do as you open up the paper is you need to indicate what the objective of the study is. And then you indicate the research questions and the hypothesis. And here's an example. The objective of the study is to test the impact of X on Y. Um, the research question is, does X reduce Y in Z population in M setting? Hypothesis, X will reduce Y in Z population in M setting. Uh, so a specific example might be um, the objective of the study is to test the impact of cognitive behavioral therapy um, on depression. The research question is, does cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT reduce depression in adolescents in Hong Kong? The hypothesis is CBT will reduce depression in adolescents in uh, in Hong Kong adolescents in a school setting. Um, so then you go on to the theory. Now the theory is going to be a little bit harder for you to write, but the whole idea is describe the theory. What is the theory and the intervention? So and I've given you some good theories or good interventions for whatever problem you have. So CBT is a common one, DBT, um, what we might call expressive arts therapy or animal assistant therapy, um, solution focused therapy, psychoanalytic, structural family therapy. So basically you need to find a research article that identifies an intervention that effectively solves whatever DV um, you pick or whatever problem. And so you need to have um, at one research article, that's it, one research article that shows evidence that your selected intervention resolves the DV for your project. You want to describe the theory behind the intervention and apply it to your project. So an example might be CBT purposes that when you change your thoughts, this can influence your emotional reactions and your behavioral reactions. So when you have anxiety provoking thoughts, this can lead to an increase in anxiety emotions. And then that leads to unhelpful behavior such as avoiding situations. And that can also lead to anxiety. So a client who uses, and here's where you come into the specific activity or intervention, is that clients will use a thinking report in order to change the thoughts, um, which will then decrease their anxiety and then change their behavior. And so you want to describe how it's supposed to work and at least one specific intervention. Then we're going to go on to the methods section. And we start off with IRB and informed consent. And so this is where you need to describe who was the IRB that approved the study, what level of study will it be or what type of application. So in this case, is it expedited? Um, is it exempt, expedited, or full, and why? And the difference is, is if the participants are at uh, less than minimal risk, minimal risk, or more than minimal risk, that's what it describes. And, and we've gone through that in the weeks in the, um, in the class. There's a week that specifically devotes to that. Um, and then also you want to talk about the informed consent. How are you giving the participants information? How are they consenting? Uh, and then here's an example of this paragraph. Then you're going to talk about the design and the intervention plan. You must design what the specific 
uh, you must uh, identify the specific design and the main quant designs are non-experimental, quasi-experimental, or full experimental. Then you have to talk about the qualitative designs, and there's a few examples of what that may be here, because you are designing a mixed methods study. Mixed methods includes quantitative and qualitative. Um, you're also going to talk about, so the type of data is qualitative and quantitative. You're also going to talk about time. So your study should be what's called longitudinal. So you should do a pre-post design. So you want to assess the baseline, let's say, if you're measuring depression or anxiety, you're measuring the baseline anxiety, you do an intervention, and then you measure their anxiety afterwards to see if the intervention worked to resolve their anxiety. Finally, you provide a diagram. Um, another thing you do is you describe what the type of SPSS data is, um, how are you going to record it in SPSS, and there is a section in D2L that talks about levels of measurement. That's what this is, um, and so um, that's that's that, and the time, again, it's longitudinal, but you also need to know what's the difference between cross-sectional and longitudinal, because that will be on a quiz. The diagram is simply a visual depiction that uses O's and X's to describe how it's going to look, and I, I give you an example here, um, and so a diagram is simply something that looks like this. Um, this would be a quasi-experimental design, uh, what and here's a question for you to think about what would I need to add to make this an experimental design you then talk about sampling and data collection so who are you going to sample how are you going to sample them are they going to be randomized or not and then um, either way what specific sampling procedure are you going to use and I list the ones of what they are here um, and data collection. So you are going to talk about how are you specifically going to collect the data. You're going to talk about the measurements, and I'm going to have another video on how to specifically do the measurement section. Finally, you're going to talk about whatever your projected limitations are, and then you have a number of appendices that you're um, required to include. So the informed consent that you created, that should be in here. Um, I want a list of the qualitative questions that you have created. I want a copy of the quantitative measurement tool as well as the validation article for the quantitative measurement tool. I want to, you know, we, you need to select a validated article. Uh, and then finally, um, one research article that has indicated that your proposed intervention actually solves uh, the DV or the problem. And this is how the points go. That is, um, that's how the paper is going to be structured. Now, this is a quick overview of the whole paper. I'll do more detailed videos about the different subsections. But if you have any questions, just let me know.